During 1984, even the most casual sports fan became fascinated with the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. It was an Olympic year, and the games were a spectacular production in Los Angeles. One of the heroes of the 1984 Olympics was Carl Lewis, former All-South Jersey and All-American athlete who earned four gold medals. Carl Lewis graduated from Willingboro High School. And on this Saturday in December, another class of athletes from Willingboro and Ocean City High Schools are gathering in a stadium named for Carl Lewis to decide the South Jersey Group 3 Football Championship. It's the Raiders of Ocean City against the Chimeras of Willingboro for the South Jersey Group 3 Championship brought to you by Knight's Pharmacy and Video and Ocean City Tradition. By Harry Claus Used Cars, 1120 Asbury Avenue in Ocean City. By First Fidelity, a bank you can count on. By Smalls Formal Wear, conveniently located at the Shore Mall. By Tulls Northeastern Fisheries, fresh lobster and fish daily. By Leon's Men's and Boys Shop, fine quality clothes at reasonable prices. By the Sentinel Ledger, serving Cape May County for over 100 years, publishing every Thursday. By Ocean Reef, the Hilton Head of South Jersey. By French Real Estate, number one, Atlantic Avenue. And by Tolson Brickwork, constructing all types of masonry. This is Tom Williams along with Bud Rink at Carl Lewis Stadium in Willingboro, New Jersey, where the South Jersey Group 3 Championship will be decided and Bud one way or the other. The season will end today and I would think that neither of these teams is going to be unhappy. They'll be a little frustrated maybe, the loser, but uh, it's been a great year for both teams. Well, Tom, it's true. When you get to a championship final, of course, only one team can win. You can't end up with a tie in playoff uh, football or any other sport, but no matter which team wins here today, both teams have had outstanding seasons, and unfortunately, one of them is going to end on a losing note, but it shouldn't, uh, it shouldn't diminish the efforts or the, what either team has accomplished throughout the season. But one thing you can count on, we should see a pretty good football game here this afternoon. Receive. We're going to defend. All right, swing around this way. Face them blue. This is Walt Moon on Maki, the, the referee. Elected to receive. Okay, fellas, shake hands. Let's have a good ball game. So Willingboro has won the toss, and uh, they will be receiving. Their co-captains were Troy Cobb, number 66, and Cordon Cooper, number 70, David Miller, and Trip Snyder representing Ocean City. And we'll be hearing from uh, Walt on Mocky throughout the game. Uh, Ed Woolley, uh, on his uh, program, his uh, Wednesday night program uh, last week, talked about Ocean City High School's attitude during this season, and especially the last part of it. kind of approach the season the last uh, four or five weeks was doing doing our best we felt that we had a stretch in the middle there where we just weren't doing our best and I've told the kids that uh, you know we got to do our best we got to work at it like that when the game's over at 3 30 you know if we've done our best then you know you can live with that you can accept that and you know whatever happens will happen and um, you know we think if we do our best it, you know we'll come out with the you know the win Ocean City coming into the game with a record of 9-1. and one. That uh, equals the most victories in a single season by an Ocean City High School football team, so they could set a school record with a victory. And Willingboro in the same position. They have won 9 of their 10, losing their opener as well to Shawnee under unusual circumstances, similar to Ocean City's loss to Holy Spirit. And uh, they can uh, be the first uh, Willingboro team to win 10 in a season. So a lot at stake, but the most important thing at stake is the South Jersey Group 3 championship, something that neither school has won since the playoff system began back in 1974. Of course, this is the first year, Tom, that Willingboro has participated in Group 3. They've, they've been in the Group 4 playoffs in the past, and uh, we look at them down on the uh, sideline right in front of us, right in your screen. Of course, you see uh, Ocean City getting ready to come onto the field in the dugout, uh, dugout section, in the uh, end zone section over there. But 
I think as, as you look at the two teams, the Raiders a much bigger team, but uh, Willingboro probably quite a bit quicker. The Ocean City High School Band, under the direction of Warren Miller, is to play our national anthem. Warren Miller, I could uh, probably just barely hear from the other side of the field in the Ocean City High School marching band. You see the Raiders gathered in the end zone about to break through a uh, booster sign held by the cheerleaders uh, just beyond the goal line. It'll officially uh, get this uh, whole thing underway, or at least get the uh, final preparations for this South Jersey championship game underway. No, Tommy, and you think we're into December now, and the Raiders really have not had a bad uh, weekend weather-wise to play football yet as, as far as... Uh, cold and rain or snow sleet whatever but it's really a nice bright day here in Willingboro there is quite a bit of wind and, and it is uh, a little chilly down there on the field but it's a nice day to play football that's right it was a little windy and chilly at Bader Field and it is a little bit today not quite as cold as it was there but uh, no rains or any other serious problem though Ed Woolley probably would have just as soon played this game on a wet field because he's dealing with a team that is lightning fast and uh, a team as you look at uh, Ty Belford talking with his uh, ball club a team that has has uh, really uh, overcome adversity. They had the number one uh, running back, at least many people thought, in all of South Jersey in Chip Mitchell. Uh, he played about six or seven games, had to undergo knee surgery. They lost their three-year starting quarterback. He had started since his freshman year uh, to an injury in the preseason. And just on Thanksgiving Eve, they lost their leader in tackles uh, to an injury in a uh, uh, annual game against Kennedy. So this is a football team that has lost and it's uh, not exaggerating the point to say possibly their three best football players certainly at the skill positions their three best football players and yet here they are nine and one in the South Jersey championship against an Ocean City Club which uh, we should say uh, has had a rather injury free season with a few guys uh, Trip Snyder and John Murphy missed a couple here and there. That's always a key too and as the players get ready for the kickoff here we should tell you that the wind is blowing from the bottom of your screen across the field. Uh, David Miller is going to kick off for the Raiders rather than Fritz Farrell uh, again respecting the deep quick threat that uh, special teams holds for Willingboro. He'll just try to place the ball somewhere short of those deep men. Fred Perkins number 41 Fred Gunter number four are the deep men for Willingboro They're both very quick Gunter has four four speed of a 40. Miller's kick goes nowhere near them though it's caught nicely on a line drive at the 37 yard line and returns to the 40 uh, again a return rather of about three yards and that was uh, Kevin Schuster who's a tight end and he looked like a tight end or maybe a shortstop as he uh, hauled in that line drive kick. I don't really think that uh, Willingboro was expecting that type of kick although if they had scouted uh, Ocean City more than just in the Pleasantville game they might have seen that. But again, the idea is to keep it away from a real quick, uh, deep man to return the ball. Good field position. They're on their 41. John Murphy split left with a slot formation. O'Neill hands to Gunther, trying to get some running room. He's out to the 45-yard line, a gain of about four. What you're going to see is two offensive teams who do uh, quite a bit differently. The Raiders prefer to run uh, inside the ends. So that's their strength. The uh, Chimeras, on the other hand, will look to get the ball outside and utilize their quickness. There'll be an awful lot of pressure uh, placed on the defensive ends for Ocean City today. George Workman and uh, Pat Lewis will be up to them to contain that wide game with some help. Balls are just across the 45-yard line. Receiver is split right, slot right formation. O'Neill gives the ball inside to Jackson. And Jackson is out close to midfield. 
Al Jackson is a, a junior. In fact, their whole starting backfield are juniors. The quarterback and the two running backs. Jackson just started for the first time when another back was injured for Willingboro right before the Kennedy game. They're on the 50-yard line, third and just about a yard. Of course, they're up against the defense today that uh, probably is better than any they have faced all year, second in South Jersey, only to Cherokee as far as fewest points allowed. From the 50, key play for the Chimeras. Uh, O'Neill on the option. He is hit. He pitches it back to Jackson. He's got the first down, and he's into the 45-yard line. Uh, Sayers and Widmeyer, one of the two, tripped him up. David Miller covered him just across uh, the 45 at about the 44 of Ocean City. It's a first down for Willingboro. Very well executed play out of that option because uh, you're going to see it. It looks like he wants to run upfield, and at the last minute, as he's going to be tackled uh, short of the first down, he pitches the ball out, and that is exactly the way the option play is diagrammed on the blackboard. Receivers split right and left. O'Neill under center with a back split behind him. He's back to throw, left handed, throws down the right side and overthrows. The pass was intended for Fred Perkins, who was double covered, but the pass was well over his head. And not a good pass at all. Uh, and the Raiders had uh, three men deep there. Butch Woodmeyer, Dave Miller, and Alan Watts coming over from his other side uh, cornerback position to help out on the play. And uh, three defenders on one uh, potential pass receiver. Uh, just not a good pass. So it's second down and 10 yards to go. Just inside the Ocean City 45-yard line. Murphy is split to the right. Wide to the left is Perkins. The backs are split behind O'Neill. And he's back on to draw play. Gives to Gunther, and Gunther's got room at the 35. Gunther into the open, and Fred Gunther will score. A 45-yard touchdown run by Fred Gunther on the draw play. And when Willingboro gets a couple of steps on you in the secondary, that speed will take over. And the Chimeras lead it 6 to nothing. A super call there by the uh, Willingboro coaching staff. Again, Ocean City really concerned about them using that speed to go outside, and, and the... Uh, the players, of course, are very conscious about being outside, uh, containing that outside game, but looks to, looks like he's going to make the pass, uh, makes the draw play instead, and just super speed to score that touchdown. Kevin Schuster to kick out of O'Neill's hold. The ball is down. The kick is blocked. It was way low and into the line, almost blocked accidentally. Schuster's kicked 21 this year, but he's unsuccessful on that one. And when it looks like exactly 10 minutes remaining in the first period, Willingboro leading Ocean City 6-0. Leon's Men's Shop, located at 756 Asbury Avenue in Ocean City, not only has fine quality apparel, but also athletic shoes by Puma, Brooks, Prokeds, and Converse. Dress shoes by Dexter and Timberland Boots. There's also top siders and dock sides for men and women, and the largest selection of Nikes for men and women in the Ocean City area, starting at children's size 8. There's jeans by Levi and Sergio Valente, sweaters by Robert Bruce, shirts by John Henry and Manhattan, jackets by Woolrich, as well as jockey sportswear and much more. Visa, MasterCard, and American Express are accepted, so stop in. As expected, the Chimeras strike like lightning, and they lead it uh, 6 to nothing in this football game on a 45-yard run by Fred Gunther. As you said, Tom, lightning uh, is a good way to describe not only how they strike, but how he runs with the football. Here comes the kick, and Schuster puts the foot into it, waiting at the 17-yard uh, line, straight up the middle with a return, and Miller is out across the 35 to about the 37-yard line, so pretty good return by the Raiders. They have pretty good field position as they start on their own 37-yard line. What I'm sure you'll see Ocean City do is uh, Test that Willingboro defense in the middle. It is a 4-4 defense, although they do show uh, a lot of other defenses. They like to pack them up in tight, but obviously Ocean City's going to want to get that running game going early. It's a wing right formation. Miller split to the left. Gunnels to Sayers right up the middle across the 40 out to about the 43-yard line. We should mention that Ocean City is the school with a defensive reputation. Now, Willingboro has given up 120-some points, and they have given up some points this year, but they've scored a whole bunch, too, and you can see why. Yeah, you know, it was almost scary to watch him break through that uh, Ocean City secondary and run that uh, 35 yards or whatever for that touchdown. Gain of about six or seven. And the Chimeras come offside. So that might give Ocean City a first down and uh, take a little bit of the uh, edge off as they'll be that out near midfield. Here we go. Blue offside. Thank you, Walt. And it's a five-yard penalty indeed against uh, Willingboro. 
think what you're going to see is Willingboro uh, try to stack everybody up near that line of scrimmage, much like Pleasantville did, to try to uh, stop that Raider inside running game. Ball's on the Ocean City 48-yard line. First down. Sayers avoids the hit. It's at midfield, and he's into about the 46-yard line of Willingboro before he finally goes down. One of the things you'll see, bud, with a team that's quick is uh, a great, lot of great pursuit. And when a guy slowed down like Frank was there, all of a sudden three, four, five guys will be around him. Yeah, of course, it's gonna, it may take three or four or five guys sometimes to bring Frank Sayers down uh, if he's got a good head of steam going. That time, uh, he had a pretty good head of steam. He dragged a couple guys along the ground a few extra yards. He gained six at second and four on the 46. Ball goes to Swenis, and he's hit behind the line of scrimmage. He stopped just short of the 45-yard line, so Ocean City will be faced with third and about three yards to go, three and a half, uh, just outside the Willingboro 45-yard line. We'd like to mention not only are you watching this game by delayed tape on Cable Entertainment Channel 2, but you're listening to it on WIIN in Atlantic City, and those of you listening on Win Radio can and see the replay of this game tomorrow afternoon, Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m. Wing, no, a uh, two tight end formation. Gunnels looks for Miller. Quick pass is dropped at the 40-yard line. And uh, Ocean City will be uh, faced with fourth down and about three yards to go. I think fourth. Excuse me. I was just going to say, Tom, I think that uh, the passing game may be a key for Ocean City today because as the defense wants to stack up and stop that inside running game, the one thing that's going to open that up is to be able to throw the ball successfully. Greg Dean back to punt, standing right about his own 42-yard line. Snap is good, not much of a rush, and he angles it away. It's a Ryan O'Neill waiting for it, but it doesn't quite reach him. Miller is down, and Miller lets it roll to the 13-yard line, and that's where it'll be put into play by the Chimeras from their own 13-yard line, already leading in the football game, six to nothing. Ocean City obviously gonna call on their defense right here, Tom, 13-yard uh, line, Willingboro, and they, they wanna force them to punt the football from deep in their own territory. Of course, they're gonna get at least three downs uh, to move that football out, but again, they've got to watch that quickness. Murphy split right, Perkins in the slot. O'Neill gives to Jackson. Jackson is hit across the 20 at about the 21 or 22 yard line. A gain of uh, three or four yards. They're gonna want the defensive ends to string the play out as much as possible. Sometimes you, you look for them to go wide and, and turn the play inside. I think what Ocean City wants to do today is to, is to force the, the uh, Chimeras as wide as possible on the carry and enable their pursuit to catch up with it uh, for as little gain as possible. Timeout is called while Greg Dean uh, tends to his shoe. Ocean City 9-1, and one, Willingboro 9-1, and one, and it'll all end as one team this uh, year has a chance for 11-0. Not too many teams in the history of South Jersey football have done it. Penn Saucon uh, has, uh, has a shot at that on this uh, championship Saturday. Slot left formation. O'Neill gives the ball to Gunter. Gunter turns the corner to the outside and uh, falls at the 30-yard line. Frank Sayers ends up on top of him at about the 31, but it's a first down for Willingboro. You know, you, you look at him, and he, he's certainly not a big ball player, 5'8", 170 pounds, and if he's 170 pounds, that's probably with all of his equipment on uh, in the shower soaking wet, but not only is he fast uh, and a breakaway threat when he's in that open field, but he's also a very quick little player, and there you saw an example of uh, how quickly he was able to get around an Ocean City defender who was coming up to pursue the play. Gunther's 5'8", 170. He's only a junior. He scored his 13th touchdown earlier in the game. He has over 1,000 yards, or almost 1,000 yards this year. O'Neill back to throw on first down. He throws down the middle, and it's incomplete. Intended for John Murphy, who made a diving effort. He had a half a step on the Ocean City defense, but uh, made a diving effort. It was just overthrown. A little bump out there, too, on the pattern. Uh, I kind of thought maybe it was a, a possible offensive pass interference cause. The receiver attempted to turn inside to catch the ball. He, he gave a little, uh, there was a little contact over there, but the uh, umpire covering the play decided that it wasn't uh, necessary to call it. Lee is split to the left with Perkins in the slot. O'Neill back to throw, it's the draw again, the ball's loose. Ocean City has recovered the football. 
Ocean City. Uh, John Murphy has come up with a football for Ocean City on that uh, draw play. It looked like again at the 28-yard uh, line of Willingboro. Well, there's a break for the Raiders. Uh, and of course, at this point, uh, you make some of your breaks. John Murphy out of that nose guard position, getting real fine pursuit, reading the play very, very well, and right in the right spot to recover that fumble for the Raiders. Wing, no, two tight ends, uh, receiver split right, ball goes to Sayers, he hits to the 25, and down to about the 22-yard line, a game of about six. And I think you'll see the Raiders uh, stay with that inside game as much as possible down here close to the uh, to the goal line. They're right around the 20-yard line, the 22-yard line, and, and uh, Frank Sayers has picked up uh, four, five, six yards each time he's carried the ball inside there, and I think they'd like to continue that until Willingboro can prove they, they can stop it. Well, it might have been some early movement there. There's flags all over the place. Ocean City right side of the uh, offensive line seemed to move. And we'll wait and get the call from Walt. It's illegal procedure against Ocean City. One of the things that's happening here is that uh, Willingboro's linebackers, and again, they're in a 4-4 defense. Is Dead ball, full start, offense. Thank you, Walt. Uh, they are in that 4-4 defense, and they want to move those linebackers around an awful lot. A couple of times, uh, they'll bring them up and make it a 6-2. Sometimes they bring the halfbacks up. And with all the movement near the defensive line of scrimmage, uh, that can sometimes draw the offense off. Ball's on the 27, second and almost nine. It's uh, Swenis. No, it's Krokenberger inside the 25, down to about the 21-yard line. So it'll be third down and almost uh, two, two and a half yards to go for Ocean City. That was one of those plays where you almost had to be down there on the field, I guess, to see the hole because it didn't look like Krokenberger had anywhere to run. But yeah, he found, uh, found a little. See that he almost looked like he was running on top of people. Yeah. But he found it. Miller split right. Backs are split. Sayers has the first down. He's into the 15, maybe the 14 or 13 yard line. I think that the Raiders uh, can have some success here through this football game. At least they're showing it so far uh, with their power running game because uh, they certainly do have an awful lot of big fellas up front offensively, and, and they just take them all one-on-one, -on -one, open a pretty big hole for Frank Sayers, and he's a pretty strong runner. Their uh, offensive line uh, or defensive line, Willingboro's average is 206 pounds, so they do have some decent size. I'll tell you about their other line in a moment. Sayers, and he's down to the 10, maybe inside the 10-yard line on a first down play. And what this is going to do uh, throughout the course of the football game is that uh, as the Raiders continue to run inside and then they are successful, eventually Willingboro is going to have to make an adjustment on defense, which is going to open up, uh, open up that passing game just a little bit. We said that offensive line, their offensive line average is 218 pounds, and if you don't count the split end, it's 226. So they make some room for these quick backs. Krokenberger avoids a tackle. He's at the five, down to the three. Should be a first down. It looks to be a first down for Ocean City. And John Gunnels is fired up. You know, it's kind of like a, a classic football game between uh, strength and power on the one side in Ocean City and, and quickness and uh, just overall tremendous team speed on the other. It's, it's really going to be a, a fine football game, as we said it. Willingboro leads in the game 6-0, but the Raiders are knocking right on the door here. Looks like they may just be short. Oh, no, they got it. They got it. Boy, that was closer than I thought it was going to be. Third first down for Ocean City, but it's uh, the last one they'll get in this possession because it's first and goal on the four-yard line of Willingboro. You can bet Willingboro is going to stack everybody up inside right now. Full house for Ocean City. And whistles. Oh, there's a photographer in the end zone. <laughs> At least he has a blue shirt, so you don't think John Gunnels was going to throw him the football. <laughs> That's right. That's right. He might not have thrown somebody the football because <laughs> he thought he was a Willingboro defender. Anyway, the full house backfield will be behind Gunnels. Swenis, Sayers, and Miller. It goes to Sayers. Sayers scores. Frank Sayers scores. His 13th touchdown of the year. And Ocean City ties the football game with 338 or 39. It's tough to read the scoreboard with the sun uh, left here in the first period. And again, normally the Raiders out of that full house backfield leave the first two guys go through as lead blockers and give the ball to the third man through. This time they gave it to the second man through. Sarazi bowls his way over. 
kick, important one too by Farrell. Looks like it's drifting to the right, and it's no good. So Ocean City also fails to convert its extra point. And with 3.38 remaining in the first period, it's 6-6. I'm Bud Knight of Knight's Pharmacy in Ocean City. We've been serving Cape May County with quality products, free delivery, advice, and parking for 25 years. Now we're proud to announce Knight's Video. Knight's Video offers great family entertainment on VHS and beta tapes, and we are continually increasing our video library. Knight's Video and Knight's Pharmacy at 801 Wesley Avenue, Ocean City. Phone 399-5555. Knight's for 25 years, a name you can trust. High football game at six. David Miller will kick off for Ocean City. And again, a short kick. Again, Schuster takes it on the line, looks for some running room. He took it at the 37, and this time gets it out to about the 45 yard line. Here comes that touchdown by Frank Sayers, bud. And again, watch, it's a full house backfield. Well, there you see the tail end of it, but what you see is Frank Sayers taking about three people into the end zone as they hit him right uh, near that goal line. I think that some people, Tom, might be. Uh, wondering why that short kick but again when you watch Freddie Gunner run you'll you'll see why they don't want to kick the ball to him Perkins on the wing left Murphy split right O'Neill pitches back to Gunner here he is he cuts out the ball comes loose the ball comes loose at about the 42 yard line oh and Ocean City has possession you see who got that Pat Lewis it might have been Pat Lewis uh, Tom I had a little trouble seeing it also but boy there's I'll tell you one thing that the Ocean City coaching staff has stressed all week and the players have talked about all week is that they're going to hit hard and force some mistakes. And, and here's a, just a great hit in there by Sayers. And uh, again, tough to see who it was that recovered the ball. Ball's on the 48 of Willingboro. It's Sayers, and he's into the 45-yard line. It almost looked like it, uh, it had to be either a linebacker or a defensive back the way uh, they came up from behind the play a little bit to pick it up. Uh, might have been Alan Watts or even uh, Craig Swenis if he happened to be in there at linebacker at that time. I don't know if we have enough of the on tape uh, of the post play uh, footage to, to be able to see who gets up with the ball. Miller is split to the left, wing right formation. Swenis is hit behind the line of scrimmage and is stopped at about the 46 yard line. So it's going to be third down and about seven for Ocean City. I don't think it's going to be too long be before you see the reverse from the Raiders. Uh, Willingboro is in pretty good pursuit of that play right there. The one where uh, Swenis carries the ball behind Sayers' block, usually to the right side. It's just a power play uh, designed to go at the end. And, of course, the option uh, or the reverse with Krokenberger works off of that. And I, I wouldn't be surprised to see that very shortly. Ball's on the 46-yard line. Gunnels back to throw. Looks Miller, sideline intercepted. Willingboro has the football back. As it is intercepted, a pass uh, intended for David Miller. And the defender was there all the way. I'm kind of wondering if... Uh, I think that was Troy Cobb, outside linebacker. No relation to Ty. But I'm kind of wondering if John uh, actually saw him. He kind of was over there on the sideline, uh, maybe blended in with some of the camera people over there because he really just put the football right in his arms. Chimeras have the ball on their own 39-yard line. O'Neal under center, runs the option, tucks it under. And he is hit at the 40, gain of about a yard. Good job there by uh, Pat Lewis at his defensive end position and Frank Sayers to come up from the linebacker spot. He uh, fought off the block very well, did Lewis, and made the tackle. Ty Belfort sending in a play there from the sidelines. I think uh, Willingboro is going to use the timeout. No, it's an equipment problem. The officials will stop the clock. 107, the clock now it stops. 106 remaining here in the first period. The sun has gone down a little bit, which will take a touch of color away from your picture, but it makes it an awful lot easier to see the scoreboard. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, Lee is split wide to the left. Perkins is in the slot. Backs in the eye. O'Neill draw play again to Gunther, and he is hit and brought down. A well-read defensive play by Frank Sayers. He took one of Gunther's shoes with him, as a matter of fact. Makes a stop at the 40-yard line. 
tell you, Fritz Furrow had a lot to do with that play, too. Out of his defensive tackle position, he did make it uh, initial contact right at the line of scrimmage, I think, slowed Guntner down just a little bit. And Sayers with real good pursuit from that linebacker spot. And that's what Ocean City's going to need. They're going to need excellent pursuit from the linebackers. And they, they want to stick people because, uh, you know, of course, kids are human beings. They get, stick in, uh, get stuck enough times and, and hard enough. I think the Raiders are hoping that uh, they're going to be a little bit leery about carrying the football into that defensive line. Ball is on the 40-yard uh, line. There's 40 seconds remaining. Clock just going back into motion now. And uh, Willingboro will get off one more play here before the end of the first period. Third down and about nine yards to go. The Chimera is just outside their own 40-yard line. Split to the left is Murphy. Perkins in the slot. The backs are split. O'Neal. Has it. He gets a great block at the 35. He's going to run with the football. O'Neill is at the 45, and he's out near midfield. Looks to be just short of the first down. No, he looks like he has enough for the first down where they're spotting the football. But a crucial block back uh, about five yards behind the line of scrimmage, or he would have been sacked. Yeah, he did get a great block and then a, a real fine individual effort. He may be just short of that first down over there. Looks like they're going to measure uh, on the far side of the field. There's a tail end of it for those of you watching on uh, cable entertainment channel two they uh, they got it first down Willingboro their fourth first down of the football game with uh, just five seconds remaining here in the first period so that will probably be the last play as the clock goes back into motion the last play here of the first period from Carl Lewis Stadium after one period it's six six and we'll be right back with the Chimera's uh, possession after this When it comes to banking in Southern New Jersey, one bank stands out. This one, First National State, South Jersey's leading commercial banking organization. With more offices and more assets, it's the one to handle all your banking needs. First National State Bank. In Southern New Jersey, it's the one to remember. First National State. Our first concern is New Jersey. On their own 49-yard line, Willingboro has possession of the football as we start the second half of this game. Those of you listening on uh, Win Radio, we remind you that uh, King Arthur will be along tonight in Sports Plus. After that, it's Texas against Texas A&M. Those of you on Channel 2, remember this game will be played again on Wednesday night at uh, 7 p.m. O'Neill back to throw. Looking down the middle, his pass is overthrown. Almost intercepted by Alan Watts, who was down on his knee. The pass was intended for James Lee but uh, overthrown he was open yeah Watts just kind of slipped down a little bit uh, again not a good pass and uh, in his defensive coverage I think Watts slipped down a little bit looking for an outside move and was on his knees when the football sailed over his head if he'd have been standing uh, upright he'd have had a real fine shot at a, an Ocean City interception and another turnover ball has to come in a little different with a left-handed thrower too second and ten Indeed it is, a slot right formation, the backs are split. And O'Neill still has it. He's hit in the backfield though and brought down by Trip Snyder. Nice fake by O'Neill, but Tripp uh, wasn't fooled. It'll be a uh, third down and about 10 yards to go for Willingboro. I'll tell you, that is a fine play by Trip Snyder, uh, especially when you consider the size of him. Tripp's about 240 uh, pounds. They list Ryan O'Neill at 180. I think he's probably closer to about 155, maybe 160 pounds. But Schneider with good pursuit from his uh, tackle position down the line to make the play. It's third down, about 11 yards to go. The ball is uh, on the 48, on their own 48. Slot right formation. Backs are in the eye. O'Neill back to pass. Has a little time. Now he runs, throws on the run. Great catch, but short of the first down. On the ground already was Fred Perkins, and he made the catch. He had stumbled and fell. The ball, fortunately, was thrown a little low, and Perkins was right there to make the catch, but he's about a half a yard short of the first down. So it's fourth down and less than a yard to go. Willingboro on the Ocean City 42-yard line and the decision for Ty Belford. Again, a real fine pass rush there. Uh, 
you see the receiver on the ground if he hadn't fallen down he wouldn't have been able to make the catch the Raiders were uh, their defensive backs were off a little bit trying to prevent that first down as it turned out they were off just a little bit too much Murphy splits right it's a wing left formation backs are split they go after it fourth and one O'Neal pitches to Gunther trying to get outside he cuts back in for the first down inside the 35 to about the 32 yard line Again, just uh, you know we've said it before and when you watch the kid run, he's he just a very, very dangerous runner. This is a football team that can put uh, points on the scoreboard very, very quickly because, uh, you know, you expect them here maybe to go inside for one yard. Uh, instead, they pitch back and, and come around the end. He, he's starting six yards behind the line of scrimmage and picks it up easily. Perkins splits right, leads to the left, and the backs are split. O'Neal gives to Jackson. Jackson's at the 30, and he's into about the 27 or 28-yard line. Willingboro uh, moving the football pretty well against Ocean City's defense. I, I think that uh, as they do every game when they go in at halftime, the Raider coaching staff will make some adjustments to, to try to stop what uh, Willingboro has been successful at. Uh, the turnovers have hurt Willingboro so far. I guess uh, obviously Ocean City trying to keep them off the board here for a second time in this half. Gain of about four. It's second and six. Murphy splits left, wing right formation. O'Neill running down the line on the option, tucks it in and keeps it. He's inside the 25 to about the 21-yard line. Close, in fact, looks like he has enough for the first down. Real fine deception. I think we're going to get a measurement here. Up, oh, They are signaling first down. So once again, Willingboro with their sixth first down of the football game. The ball is on the 22-yard line. First and 10 for Willingboro. Tie game, 6-6. Chimera scored first from distance, and Ocean City drove it in after a uh, fumble recovery and scored the tie. Both teams missed their one-point conversion attempts. Lee is split to the right, slot right, backs in the eye. O'Neill still has it, and he is hit and driven down by Frank Sayers behind the line of scrimmage, a loss of about a yard on the play, and each helps the other up. There's just a little indication of sportsmanship, and of course, uh, we talk a lot about uh, what each team wants to do as far as the football game is concerned, but you, know, you still want to remember that this is high school football, and these kids uh, just displayed some good sportsmanship right there. Loss of about a yard at second and 11, the ball on the Ocean City 23-yard line. Tom Williams along with Bud Rink, Ocean City, Willingboro, South Jersey Group 3 championship game. Murphy splits to the left. Perkins in the slot. O'Neill is back to throw. Under some pressure, throws it over the middle. Incomplete. And again, Ryan O'Neill threw it too far. He overthrew John Murphy, who might have been able to do something with the ball at around the five-yard line. I tell you, the way uh, he's putting the ball in the air, I would not be surprised to see an interception or two sometime before this football game is over because uh, he is definitely overthrowing his receivers. And David Miller, that time, out of the free safety position, just a little bit... Uh, too close to make that interception. Of course, he's playing uh, defense on the man to, to prevent the reception, but uh, wouldn't be surprised to see an interception before this football game is over. Third down, about 11 yards to go on the 23 of Ocean City. Lee is splits to the right, Perkins to the left, and the backs in the eye behind O'Neill. O'Neill back to throw. Looks down the middle. Again, it's overthrown and intercepted. Allen Watts at the seven yard line and he's out to the 19 yard line. So on the very next play, Ocean City comes up with that interception that you mentioned, Bud, and I think there was a flag at the end. A flag, I think, thrown at the end of the play. Hard to see because uh, the, the chalk lines down there on the field are in yellow, as are the flags. May get a clip against the Raiders on the run back. It looks like that's it. We'll listen to what Walt has to say here. No, Walt didn't say anything. So it's a uh, big play for Ocean City. It's not quite as uh, good field position as they would have had with a penalty. They're back inside the 10 at about the nine yard line. They're happy no matter what. <laughs> Full house behind Gunnels. Straight ahead Sayers. And he's out close to the 15 yard line. Once again, you get an example of uh, Frank Sayers' strength. And we talk so much about uh, how well he plays offense. He's made some big defensive plays this year, too, from his linebacker spot. Uh, and that last drive, uh, the second down play, was a big one for him and forces the pass, uh, forces them into a passing situation. The Raiders come up with that turnover. Ball is on the 14-yard line, gain of about five, second and just about five yards to go. The Raiders try to pick up something on a quick snap straight ahead, but no, no gain. 
There was no uh, hole there at all for Frank Sayers. Really would like to pick up the first down here. Obviously, of course, you always want to pick up the first down, but at this point, with about third and uh, six, you're operating from your own 14 yard line. This is a, a pretty big play because if you're forced to punt, uh, Willingboro is going to get pretty good field position. Quick snap again. Ball is handed off to Miller to the outside. The 20 at the 25. Miller bobbles the ball, but manages to uh, retain possession. He's out of bounds between the 30 and 35. Enough, enough for an Ocean City first down. Well, I tell you, what a great call to it. Showing David Miller's uh, versatility. He's running out of the uh, running back spot that time. You're going to see him come around the play. Looks like it's designed to go left, a little misdirection, and David showing some of his speed to get around that outside and pick up the first down. That's right. Well blocked inside, but Miller had to outrun a couple of people to get that uh, corner turn. So it's first and 10, Ocean City. The ball spotted on the Raider 30 yard line. There is about six minutes, six, maybe almost seven minutes remaining here in the first half. Gunnels gives to Sayers, and he gets a yard, maybe two, out to the 31 or 32 yard line. Well, again, the Raiders, that's, you know, their bread and butter, and, and Sayers has picked up uh, decent yardage inside. Willingboro's come up a couple times big and stopped the play. It's almost like uh, they're anticipating when the Raiders are going to run that play, and then they kind of stack it up on that side. I think that's why, uh, as I said earlier, you're going to see them uh, go to that reverse sometime soon to try to, you know, get that misdirection. Miller split left, Krokenberger wing right. Straight ahead, Sayers. He's across the 35 to about the 36-yard line. So it'll be third and four coming up for Ocean City. And the little subtle things that you never hear about uh, the next day. There was a key right there. It looked like the handoff between uh, Gunnels and Sayers was not a perfect handoff, and, and uh, both players did a real good job, Gunnels, in getting him the ball and Sayers in holding on to it. Miller splits left, third and four on the 36. Wing right. It's the reverse to Krokenberger, and Krokenberger is going to get about two yards to the 38-yard line. It's a couple yards short of the first down, and I'm sure we'll see Greg Dean. Well, there was the reverse. Joey Hudson, number 55, out of his linebacker spot. Uh, nobody blocked him, and Bobby Krokenberger had him to beat uh, in order to get about 10 or 15 yards. There were a couple of men downfield uh, who were in a position to make the tackle, but had Krokenberger been able to avoid Joey Hudson, he would have picked up the first down, so a big play by Willingboro. Ball's at the 37. Dean stands at about his own 25. Good snap. Just gets it away. Good rush by Willingboro. And it bounces at the 33 and rolls down to the 31. So the Chimeras take the football at their own 31-yard line with 6.06 left here in the first half of the tie game. See the Raider defense, uh, of course, coming back on the field there. You, you get an opportunity to see the, the fans across the way that have made their way up from the Shore area for this football game, and uh, you know, that's a pretty big tribute to them. A real nice crowd here. You would expect a lot of Willingboro people here, but the Raider uh, contingent has made the trip from Ocean City, and uh, really a pretty fine turnout here this afternoon. I must say, too, it's a well-lined field. It's easy to spot where the football is and in pretty good shape with two teams playing here. The draw to Gunther, and this time he's uh, not going to get much, if anything, on the play. Great reaction there by Murphy. John Murphy, who makes the stop for about a one-yard gain, second and nine. Again, there's initial hit in there at the line of scrimmage by one of the interior linemen. might have been Schneider or Furl, and uh, Murphy with good pursuit. And he's a quick football player. He's a classic Ocean City middle guard because uh, not only does he have some strength, but he's also very, very quick. Under center, O'Neill. He's got a slot left formation, rolls that way. Cuts back, jumps the tackle, and gets out to about the 37 yard line. A gain of about six yards, five or six yards. And it'll be a third down and four for Willingboro. It's the old student body left that uh, you borrow from USC. You got about eight of the 11 players on the team leading him around the left side. Uh, Again, the Raiders with good pursuit, and that's what it's going to take to stop that speed is string the play out as much as possible, give your teammates an opportunity to come over and make the play. Third and almost five yards to go. Three and a half minutes left here in the first half. Slot right, backs in the eye. O'Neal. Back the pass. His pass is again overthrown, intended for Kevin Schuster. O'Neal just took one step back, really put a lot of pressure on his offensive line and was under some pressure, but he overthrew it. It's interesting, too, because uh, 
every pass that he has thrown incomplete has been a high pass. Uh, the one pass that he threw poorly that was a low pass ended up being complete Bar, because yeah. uh, his receiver was lying on the ground when the ball got there. But uh, you know, that's he's got to make an adjustment there from Willingboro's standpoint. Schuster, a good punter, stands at his own 25. High snap, but he gets it. Doesn't hit this one too well. It hits at the 40 and rolls down to about the 38-yard line. Ocean City will have decent field position, maybe their own 37-yard line with... Uh, just a little more than three minutes remaining in the first half and the score tied at 6-6. Schuster is also a junior, bud. And you look at uh, the, the people in the skill positions, they got a 6'1", 260-pound sophomore tackle. I would think that uh, Willingboro would be a good bet to be one of the contenders to come back to this game next year. They've got a lot of young people because of the, the, of the adversity this year. And they certainly, uh, as you said, have overcome that adversity just to get here. Wing right, uh, Miller split left, Gunnels under center. It's a first down play to... Frank Sayers, and he breaks out across the 45 to the 47-yard line. And close to the first down. Looks like he might be just short. Two Willingboro players uh, getting up very slowly. One, number 85, who was in the initial uh, contact back there, Kevin Schuster. The other one, uh, not quite sure, but both look like they got up uh, hobbling a little bit, maybe on twisted ankles, but they seem to be all right. Here comes a measurement. John Gunnels looks it over. It's first down Ocean City, their fifth of the football game. Straight ahead blocking. Uh, you know, Sayers running that dive play right at that left guard. And uh, it's not a play that has surprised Willingboro. Sometimes uh, they're there to stuff it up, and, and other times uh, Sayers has picked up good yardage. Ocean City on their own 48. Miller split left, wing right formation. Straight ahead, Sayers. And he's at midfield and down to the 49-yard line of Willingboro. Again, I, I know I say it every week, but the, there's just nothing fancy about that. It's uh, the Ocean City Raider offensive line. Uh, Chris Gunnels, John Boulogne, Bob Gowdy is up there on the offensive line. We'll get the other guys uh, after this play. Split, uh, backs are split. Miller uh, wide to the left. Sayers again, and he's to about the 46-yard line of Willingboro. Sayers, one of the most successful uh, single-season backs in Ocean City history, has over 1,000 yards this year. Only four or five uh, Ocean City running backs have ever done that in one year. Third down, about four yards to go for the Raiders. They're on the 46-yard line of Willingboro. Miller splits left, about a minute 45 left in the half. Both teams with their timeouts remaining. And I think the Raiders will get a first down here. That was uh, Cordon Cooper, the defensive end, trying to get an extra jump. It's not unusual to see that happen. We saw it a lot in the Deptford game. Uh, you know, John, obviously, Gunnels, uh, as a quarterback, is going to change his cadence just a little bit, which is perfectly legal. What you're not permitted to do, of course, is to bob your head. But uh, what Gunnels did was perfectly legal to change the sound of his cadence and, and uh, draws Willingboro offsides in their haste to stuff that play up. Five-yard penalty takes it to the 41 of uh, Willingboro, and that'll be an Ocean City first down. I think Walt's going to tell us about it now. The five-yard penalty will oh, well. fall on the 41-yard At least we can read his signals. First down, Ocean City on the 41-yard line of Willingboro. Clock shows 141, and now goes back into motion. Walt forgot that he was making his TV debut today. <laughs> Split to the left is Miller, wing right, uh, Krokenberger, quick snap, Gunnels back the throw, looks for Miller, pass is caught nicely by uh, Miller at the 25-yard line, and another Ocean City first down. Miller did a nice job of positioning his body there, but even if it had been closely, more closely covered, I think he could have pulled that in. And just a very well-thrown pass, too, by John Gunnels, Tom. I know that the Raider coaching staff uh, felt that that John needs to have a big day today. He gets enough time, a short drop, throws the ball uh, into some coverage, but right on the money into his receiver's arms. On the 25 of Willingboro, Ocean City, with Miller split left, Sayers, and he's to the 20, maybe the 19-yard line. Clock runs down to a minute 10. Ball is going to be spotted on the 20. Unofficially, the Raiders uh, still with their three timeouts. Now they're going to take one right here. And... Uh, we're going to take a timeout here also. At Willingboro, the score is Ocean City 6, Willingboro 6. We'll be back after this.
At Small's Formal Wear, we know that the man who makes the clothes doesn't always know the proportions of the man who wears them. And that's why we do everything possible to make the clothes make the man. So even if the man isn't perfectly fit, his Small's Formal will be. And that's how a visit to Small's can make any man a new man. Small's Formal Wear. It's only fitting. We're at Carl Lewis Stadium with about a minute and two seconds remaining, exactly a minute and two seconds remaining in the, in the first half in a tie football game for the South Jersey Group 3 Championship, tied at six. There will not be a tie in this game. They will have sudden death and all kinds of other tie-breaking procedures if the game ends four periods as a tie. Krokenberger split right, Miller to the left, Gunnels back to throw. Sees some pressure and throws it away. Uh, Sw Swenis was at about the 10. I don't know if John intended to throw that away or not or whether it just slipped out of his hand. I think he did intend to throw it away. He was getting great pressure from the blind side and you know quarterbacks seem to have that sixth sense sometime they can they can feel that heat from the backside and, and he was getting some pressure from a blitzing linebacker of Willingboro and I think he just wanted to throw the ball away rather than risk the interception. Third down about four yards to go. Miller split left, wing right again. Gunnels to throw. Throws for Miller. He's at the sidelines. Can't pull it in. Well, just a little bit too high for uh, Miller to pull in and stay in bounds. He was inside the 10, but it falls incomplete. So it's fourth and four for Ocean City. They're on the 20-yard line of Willingboro. Raiders have two timeouts remaining. Ed Woolley talking with his assistants over there and sends a play in from the sideline. Obviously, it was a sideline pattern, and, and uh, Miller had to contend with keeping his feet in bounds when he caught the ball. And you could see him kind of stretching out, uh, which meant that his feet were right near that sideline, and, and he just wasn't able to reach the ball. Miller right, Krokenberger left, single setback. Don't be surprised if the single setback gets it. He does. Sayers right up the middle, and he's to the 15 yard line. First down, if they spot the football where Frank Sayers put it. And they do. First down, Ocean City. And the clock is running here. Uh, the Raiders in a hurry up uh, huddle. They don't want to take a timeout right here. It looks to be about 47 seconds remaining here in the half. Miller split left. It's a wing right with two backs split behind Gunnels. Gunnels looks for Miller. Quick pass to the sidelines. He makes the catch. And he is, his knee was down when he caught the ball at the 11 or 12 yard line. So that keeps the clock running. And it's uh, important that the Raiders know that. Ed Woolley knows right away he's signaling for a timeout over there. So uh, a real heads up play there by the coaching staff realizing that that play was not out of bounds. 27 seconds remaining in the first half. Still tied at 6-6, but the Raiders have an opportunity when we come back. Here's a toast to those who love the sky. The wings of America make them yours. Aim high, Air Force. Nothing will stop the U.S. Air Force. South Jersey Group 3 Championship game on Cable Entertainment Channel 2 and Win Radio 1450, both on delay. We remind you, listening on the radio, though, this game will be shown tomorrow at Sunday, December 2nd at 2 p.m. If you want to watch it and you are a Cable Entertainment subscriber, tune in at 2 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. If you're not a Cable Entertainment subscriber, go visit one. Miller split left. Gunnels back to throw. Looks for Miller in the corner. He fell down. It's incomplete. Miller slipped on his cut right at the corner of the end zone, and the pass fa uh, falls incomplete, 23 seconds left. Gunnels had excellent pass protection there. Give that offensive line some real credit. Uh, just really did a fine job keeping uh, Willingboro's defense off of Gunnels' back. He threw a pretty well-thrown pass, but as you said, Miller just slipping down in the end zone, uh, unfortunately, because it looked like it could have been six. Third and about seven. The ball's on the 12, and I guess Ocean City would consider a field goal if they are unsuccessful here. They still have a timeout left. Gunnels back to throw. Swear swings out of the backfield. He drops the pass. Frank Sayers was open at the 12 on a little swing pass, 
but he dropped it. It was about knee high, but it was a catchable ball. Clock stops with 20 seconds left here in the first half. And they're going to try the field goal. A little surprising because uh, the Raiders, uh, it's going to be a, a pretty hefty attempt field goal wise. And uh, there is a pretty strong crosswind. You can't really notice it uh, on your TV screen. But if, uh, if Fritz Burrow is successful with this kick, it's going to be uh, a pretty excellent effort. It will be a 29-yard uh, field goal attempt, approximately. And uh, he already holds the school record for distance in any kind of field goal, 44 yards. But that was a free kick with no snap from center and no uh, on-rushing defense. This would be his first from the line of scrimmage if it's successful. He's not saying it's going to happen, but you always want to keep in mind that David Miller is the holder here. Mm -hmm. And uh, he can throw the football and he can run with it. So. Uh, the field goal attempt is not a lead pipe cinch. Miller kneels at the 19 yard line, waiting the snap. And Farrell set. Ball is down. The kick is up. The kick is good. Fritz Farrell kicks a field goal with 29 seconds from the 29 yard line, with 16 seconds remaining in the first half to give Ocean City a 9 to 6 lead. We'll be right back. When it comes to banking in Southern New Jersey, one bank stands out. This one, First National State, South Jersey's leading commercial banking organization. With more offices and more assets, it's the one to handle all your banking needs. First National State Bank. In Southern New Jersey, it's the one to remember. First National State. Here's the kick by Miller, and he tries to kick to a spot. He does to about the 13-yard line where Perkins picks it up. Perkins trying to come across field. He's across the 25 and out to the 28-yard line. He used up about seven seconds of the remaining time. And Willingboro will have the football on their own 28-yard line with eight seconds remaining here in the first half. And you would think uh, only one play here, but if it's a quick uh, pass in completion, it could be uh, time for two plays. But Ocean City going to be in a in a prevent defense. Their their cornerbacks are going to be way back. The clock is running. It's They're back to get motion. a playoff. Yeah, no timeout, no play. Willingboro is going to let it run out. Ocean City, I think, gets the football too to start the second half of this game. Anyway, at halftime on a Fritz Furl field goal, Ocean City leads Willingboro nine to six. And we'll have more of the South Jersey Group Three Championship game coming up. Hi, I'm Tom Watson, and here's a tip that will help you sink. Six on a 29-yard field goal by Fritz Furl with 15 seconds left in the first half. They uh, scored earlier on a four-yard run by Frank Sayers. The first score of the game was a 45-yard run by Fred Gunter of Willingboro. Nobody's kicked an extra point yet, but it's been quite a football game, and I'm sure we've got 24 more exciting minutes left. And after Gunter got on the board uh, first for Willingboro, you thought to yourself, my golly, uh, you know, you, you've heard about this kid's quickness, but uh, since that time, the Raiders have contained him fairly well. Of course, Willingboro has been hurt uh, by a couple of turnovers, interception by Watts, uh, a fumble recovery by John Murphy. Uh, and one thing that's uh, important, at least for them to start the second half here, is that they're going to receive the football. So it does not give Willingboro an opportunity to be all fired up, come out offensively, and put points on the board right away. Of course, you know, their defense is going to come out uh, fired up. The Raiders want to get something established here early in the second half. Krokenberger and Miller are back deep at around their own 11 or 12 yard line. Those of you listening on Win Radio, King Arthur is in Sports Plus tonight. And Texas against Texas A&M on the air at 725. Here comes the kick from Kevin Schuster. It's high up in the air, short, taken at the 35 and out to about the 37 yard line. Ocean City will have decent field position. John Boulogne uh, coming up with that 
recovery. Uh, kicked it right to him. He's an offensive lineman, not uh, the kind of person usually you want to run the football back, but he fielded it uh, just like a back would and uh, held on to the football, and the Raiders will operate from their own 37-yard line to start the second half. Didn't he almost score a touchdown earlier this year with a fumble recovery? Yeah, I think he did. He wants to be a back. <laughs> Miller split to the right, the backs are split. Gunnels gives to Sayers. Sayers at the 40, Sayers at the 50, and a first down for Ocean City on a big burst of about 14 yards by Frank Sayers on the first offensive play of the second half, and a Willingboro player has been shaken up on the play at around the 35-yard line. He seems to, hopefully it's just leg cramps, but he seems to be very, very, uh, very uncomfortable. And some fine blocking on the right side of that uh, Ocean City offensive line. Uh, Bob Gowdy out of the center position. Uh, Daryl Sharap is in there at guard. Gets a good block from uh, Chris Gunnels, the right tackle. Workman, the end of Krokenberger's downfield in front of him. Just a, a fine team effort that time to, to uh, spring Sayers for a first down on the first play of scrimmage from scrimmage here to start the second half. Let me also remind those of you watching cable entertainment that uh, sometime in the next uh, week to 10 days, on the Channel 2, we will have a special edition of the Ed Woolley Show reviewing the entire 11 game season. And hey, that's going to be a collector's item because uh, you're talking about uh, one of the great, great seasons, no matter what happens.